want to talk to the kids. I have schizophrenia! Teens on TikTok self-diagnosing themselves with rare mental health disorders, in, in most cases that they don't have. People say like, oh, here's signs you may have this disorder. Like, it was like bipolar or like borderline or... Um, all these different like rare disorders I've never even heard of before. Biological sex is fake. My mind like would just be like, you know, like maybe I don't have just depression and anxiety, maybe it's something else. I want to talk to the kids. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So is it just me or does it seem as though mental health issues and mental illness is just steadily on the incline in this country? Does it seem as though mental illness is an increasing problem? I mean, hi, look who you're watching right now. Okay, no, but seriously, I want to talk to you guys today about something that has been freaking me out for a few years now and that I have suspected is happening and now we actually have data to back it up. And what that is, is the social contagion of mental illness on TikTok and particularly its devastating effect on teenage girls. The explosion in popularity of self-diagnosis, glorifying mental illness, glorifying trauma, and influencers building brands based on their self-purported and self-diagnosed mental illnesses is just rampant on TikTok. If you have the app, you have seen it. And even if you don't have the app like me, I'm banned, but every time I go on Twitter or Instagram, someone's reposting a video of someone claiming that there are 17 people living in them. They have 17 alternate personalities. There are teenage girls that have tics and have Tourette syndrome. All of a sudden, there's just this explosion in Tourette syndrome. How convenient. In fact, this is such a problem that doctors are reporting record numbers of teenage girls specifically coming in and claiming to have developed some sort of tick or Tourette syndrome tendencies. Beans. 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 Shit. Beans. Bean. Bean sprout. A bean sprout. E. And these same sentences and phrases you were seeing repeated by girls across the world? Across the world, both in Australia and in America, using similar phrases. And it was that made us think that social media was a, a link in, in what was going on. At the same time this is happening, there are TikTokers being exposed for faking these Tourette syndrome symptoms, these tics. Wow, 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 wow. I want to talk, wow, wow, wow. I wanted to talk a little bit about, wow, 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 never mind. And in a very twisted way, popularizing them, making them a trend, something that is a real condition, don't get me wrong, that afflicts very real people, is suddenly becoming an aesthetic online. Why is that? Doctors are also reporting record numbers of teenage girls coming in claiming to have very rare mental health conditions that don't typically appear in that demographic, in that age group. Disassociative identity disorder in particular is an extremely popular hashtag on TikTok with 2.5 billion views. How can this very obscure, very rare condition be garnering this much attention on an app? Hi, welcome to a day in the life of somebody with dissociative identity disorder. It's 8.30 in the morning. I'm pretty sure Asher woke up and got coffee and I just switched in. Hey, it's Art. It is 8.40. Asher was just out and then I switched in. My name is Tristan. I am the host of the Asylum System and if you have met us, you have probably met me. My name is Onyx. I am the primary protector of the asylum system. I mainly hold traumas regarding adulthood abuse and adulthood abusers. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm the social protector of the asylum system. I've been around for a very, very long time. Hi, I'm Doe. And again, why is there no explosion of 45-year-old men developing this disorder, 60-year-old women developing the disorder? 45-year-olds and 60-year-olds are on TikTok, newsflash. That population is on TikTok. And even though people think that it's just so different, I also see the same thing happening with transgender. So many people on TikTok specifically are convincing themselves and being convinced by influencers and by the algorithm that they are transgender when they're not. Studies have shown a 4 thousand percent increase in teens identifying as transgender and that's not easily explained away by an increased social acceptance as activists would say because lgbt acceptance is actually statistically on the decline so there's no explanation for that 
And keep in mind, it's not to say that none of these mental health issues exist. Obviously, they do. Transgender people are very real. Hi, I'm one of them. People with schizophrenia are very real. People with bipolar disorder, very real. People with Tourette's syndrome. I want to start this discussion with talking about teenage girls identifying as trans because obviously that's my wheelhouse. There's a very interesting cognitive dissonance happening here because a lot of people are very willing to accept the fact that these tics are a social contagion, that these other mental health disorders these teenagers are claiming to have are genuinely a social contagion. There are articles written about it in the New York Times and people are genuinely saying, why are all these teenage girls getting ticks off of TikTok. It's clearly something that is contagious. But a lot of those same people raising that alarm would be much less willing to acknowledge that the exact same thing is happening with transgender. So try gender and the way you identify in it can be very heavily based on your culture and your cultural background. There are three genders. There's a third gender. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'm sorry, but you can identify as those two non-binary genders. And then take your pick if you want man or woman or a, not even another non-binary gender. Yeah, these teenage girls can totally convince themselves via TikTok that they have Tourette's syndrome tics that affect them every hour of every day. But no, they, they can't possibly be identifying as trans as a result of a contagion, right? Of course not. That would be politically incorrect. An article in the New York Times called How Teens Recovered from the TikTok Ticks wrote, a surprising percentage of their patients with the TikTok Ticks identified as transgender or non-binary, but without having hard data in hand, multiple attendees said the doctors worried about publicly linking transgender identity and mental illness. The article basically states that the way that these teens cured or had their, you know, tics that weren't really ticks cured were just being educated and convinced that they really didn't have them, just basically brought back down to reality, right? The difference between, you know, showing a teenager that they don't actually have ticks and showing a teenager they're not actually transgender, though, is the latter has a huge taboo against it. In fact, it's illegal in some places. In Canada, it's actually illegal and considered conversion therapy for a therapist to meaningfully push back in any way on a minor, on a patient who is questioning if they're transgender. They are forced to affirm. It's affirmative therapy. What a perfect storm. I mean, you have all these kids who are being convinced that they are trans via TikTok, therapists that can't push back in any way, and then they're on the road via that therapist to irreversible surgeries and hormone treatments. Could we be failing kids anymore? How does TikTok convince a young impressionable teenager that they're transgender? Actually very easily. All meaning behind the word transgender has basically been diluted to the point that if you are gender nonconforming in any way, you are transgender. That's how far the word has expanded. There are teenagers thinking that if you use emojis as pronouns, you are transgender. So I'm going to be showing you how to use emoji pronouns in sentence. Did you know that any emoji can be used as pronouns? Shut up! No! What used to be a very rare and very real diagnosis for a very small fraction of the population is now just another popular aesthetic on TikTok, similar to the tics, similar to DID, similar to borderline personality disorder. Let's focus on top surgery, which is a female to male surgery to remove the breasts, double mastectomies. I don't know who needs to hear this but top surgery is for anybody. There's no template for what you must look like after top surgery. What makes life so beautiful is the diversity in its people. And those who are post-op top surgery are no different. Top surgery isn't limited to one gender, one expression, one style. It is not limited to one ethnicity, one culture, one race. It's not limited to one shape or size. Those who are post-op have just as much variety as the rest of the world. Some choose nipples, some don't. Some have straight scars, some have curved scars, some have no scars. Some of us are feminine, some of us are masculine, some of us are androgynous. The only one thing that we all truly share is freedom. Top surgery isn't limited to one gender, one expression, or one style. Let's unpack that. This video is so viral and is about the most irresponsible message in regards to a permanent surgery that I could imagine. It should absolutely be limited to one thing, adult female to male transsexuals, and obviously women with breast cancer and, and various illnesses, but you get what I'm saying. Not any teenage girl who opens her phone maybe is uncomfortable with her growing body, sees this emotional porn music, and is told that it's not just limited for one gender. It's not just limited for one expression or one style. What? 
A whistleblower at a transgender clinic that was treating kids uh, called the Washington University Transgender Center recently came out with some very explosive claims about what was happening at this clinic. So first off, she's a woman who describes herself as the left of Bernie Sanders. So I just think it's important to say that and say that this is not some right winger that came out and is just trying to bash trans kids. That's the narrative people like to pull, right? Not the case. She said she could not in good conscious work at the clinic anymore because they are harming kids. Here's some of the examples she gave. She told of an instance where a teenage girl received a double mastectomy and three months later came back asking to have her breasts reattached. She told of kids whose identities changed from day to day and whose pronouns were inanimate objects. Sound familiar? And these kids were still prescribed cross-sex hormones and surgeries. You would think that a wavering, you know, unsteady identity and using inanimate objects as pronouns would maybe be a couple red flags that a physician would say, hey, you know, I'm not going to do anything permanent to this child. But, you know, we don't live in a world where people put integrity over profits, unfortunately. That's just not how the world works. So all these kids receive surgeries and hormones regardless. Hi, my name is Jasper. I use they at pronouns. Hi, my name is Liana. I use they demon pronouns. This video is how to use our pronouns. I want to make it clear that the two kids you just watched in that video would be candidates for cross-sex hormones in surgeries at the clinic that we just talked about. That should terrify you. It's clear to me as an adult who came to the conclusion that I am transgender through years of soul searching, years of, you know, weighing my options and years of suffering, really, that transgender is the new emo. And you can laugh when I say that. You can disregard that. It's the truth. Every generation has a trend. Every generation has a phase. However, in generations past, you could pretty much make it out of your generation's phase and your generation's trend with hopefully just a bad haircut and maybe some extra band shirts that you can wear in bed at night. The worst of it is if you were emo and you cut, and that was probably the worst of it. But the negative ramifications and long-term consequences of these trends were nothing compared to that of today. And these trends were not affirmed by the adults around the kids. The emo kids weren't having their wrists cut by the adults. The trans kids are having their breasts cut off and their genitals cut off by the adults. One of the more terrifying forces on TikTok are the adults trying desperately to convince kids that they're trans. Enter Jeffrey Marsh, one of the more popular and infamous trans non-binary activists on the app, whose account is not only in great standing and is pushed by the algorithm, but also has received, you know, money in endorsements and brand deals, particularly from tampon companies, which is disgusting and strange. Um, so he's, you know, in great standing in the community, right? A pillar in the community. He routinely targets kids in his videos. I want to talk to the kids. Biological sex is fake. So not only is he specifically pumping these kids' heads full of misinformation in an objective way, right? Not just the leftist activist way of calling something misinformation, which just means information I don't like. Telling a kid that biological sex isn't real, that's straight up just misinformation. That's like saying the sky isn't blue. He's also specifically targeting kids for private conversations. Your parents screwed up. It's okay to say so. <laughs> That's why I made a Patreon, so that we could talk about it, so that we could connect in a way that has more privacy, so that we could talk to each other in a way that's uh, more open and stuff that we wouldn't share like in the comments of a video like this. I think you're worthy and valuable and I wanted to spend more connected time with you. What a freak show. Surgeons who profit off the surgeries they're performing on TikTok are also building brands off of targeting minors. Dr. Sadib Gallagher is a popular TikTok influencer who has done double mastectomies on patients as young as 13. She rose to popularity making completely whack, quirky videos targeted at minors. Here at Gallagher Plastic Surgery, you can just text us. You can arrange a whole consult, probably set up most of a surgery without talking to anybody on the phone. We will do a video consult later, but just text us on this number. At this point, we have to count the amount of forces going out of their way to convince kids that they're transgender. You have these influencers, you have these surgeons going on the app, you have these institutions that are not allowed even legally to push back on these kids thinking that they're trans. You have the school systems 
which are now teaching gender identity and planting that seed of doubt in people's in young kids' minds. You have the algorithm, all of these things, just the perfect storm to completely mess these kids up for life. And again, TikTok isn't just convincing these kids that they are trans. It's also the disassociative identity disorder. It's also the borderline personality disorder, the tics, but all of those things do not have the same consequences. The kids being convinced they're trans have their reproductive systems absolutely ravaged by medications that doctors and therapists are convincing them and their families are healthy for them to take. They are sterilized for life. Their bodies are permanently changed. Again, my generation was just emo. Some of them made it out with some scars on their wrists, which are pretty ugly, but they can still have babies. There is a more dark and insidious component to the social contagion of mental illnesses and transgender ideology on TikTok, and that is the fact that it's exactly what China wants our kids to be consuming, this content. This is one of the things that I talked about on the Joe Rogan podcast because I find it so important, which is that China is actually engineering the algorithm in America specifically to indoctrinate kids into this ideology, to have kids be focusing on things like gender and questioning their gender and, you know, a million sexualities while the Chinese kids are getting how to build rocket ships, (laughs) how to excel in school, how to get perfect grades. It's actually genius. And if you're of the opinion like me that we actually are currently in a cold war with China... It makes perfect sense. I. It's almost like China is fucking with us because the algorithm. But it's not just the algorithm. It's like they created TikTok, and TikTok is if you know when you've talked to software engineers that have back engineered the TikTok platform and gone over like all this different stuff that it does to violate privacy. They said we've never seen an app like this before. <laughs> I wish it could just be truly politically neutral. Like we did not appreciate MySpace for what it was. That shit was politically neutral. Tom had our back. Yes, that shit was fun. So what is the solution? I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to tell you how to parent. I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't allow your kids on TikTok. But I will say that if I was a parent, I would not allow my kid on TikTok. I would have meaningful conversations with my kids about the brainwashing that is taking place in culture. Because even though kids are impressionable, kids are not dumb. Of course, it all comes down to the age and when it's age appropriate to have these discussions, of course, but I see a tactic that a lot of parents, particularly parents on the right and that are conservatives, they have this tactic of not talking about gender at all with their kids, not talking about gender ideology or sexuality at all with their kids. And I don't think that's the right way to do it. If you don't do it, the TikTok algorithm will. The public school system, which we all know is an absolute mess, will. I think if you put your kid on game that there are forces out there that are trying to brainwash them, that are trying to indoctrinate them, that are telling them lies, and that this is a moment in time that a lot of actual misinformation is being spread by the people claiming to be against it, I think a lot of kids are going to wake up to that. I also think the over-medicalization of youth is a huge problem. It's not to say behavioral disorders among kids don't exist, but it seems as though every kid that has a bad attitude, that acts up in class, that's a little too hyper, is suddenly on a pill, is suddenly on a medication, suddenly has some sort of disorder rather than just a kid being a kid. It's no secret that I did not have a happy upbringing. I had a pretty rough life. I grew up in a household where a lot of bad things happened, some of which I've never even (laughs) opened up and disclosed to you guys because it's just that traumatic. And so as a result, I was a very depressed kid. I was a very sad kid. I was not a kid who was jumping off the walls happy, right? Now, this was a result of my environment, right? The things that were happening in my household were taking a toll on my happiness. The adults in my life had a choice to change that environment to increase my happiness, but instead, and I've told this story before, you know, I think my mother meant well and I think that she's a good person, but rather than taking accountability for the negative things that were happening in my home and the ways in which I was being harmed, she chose to take me to a therapist who tried to put me on a bunch of pills. I remember being diagnosed with ADHD, with OCD, ADD, every three letter disorder that I do not have in all actuality at like eight, nine years old, simply because I came in and said I was sad. I see the same thing happening with so many kids going and getting on puberty blockers and hormones and being medicalized for things that could very well dissipate over time or be fixed by the parents if they just took accountability or if they just got offline, right? And I really do think that this time in history is going to be looked back on as just this time of fascination and obsession with medicalization, that everyone had to be on a pill at all times. Everyone had to be, you know, it's very interesting to live through that in real time. You know, every time you turn on the TV, it's a commercial for an antidepressant, for this and for that. And again, it's not that some people don't benefit from that, but there are a lot of people that reach to that, I think, rather than trying to fix their lives. There are a lot of parents that put their kids on those 
rather than trying to actually help their kid. It's easier to throw them off to a doctor, right? It's a crazy, crazy world. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel as well as my podcast channel. I post podcasts on there every single week that all pertain to topics I talk to you on this channel. So if you just want more of me, you're going to have to subscribe to that channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.